If you're listening on the day this episode is released, happy Halloween. Today is the big day that so many kids, and I think some of us grown-ups look forward to. If you have a baby or toddler, you may or may not be taking your little one out trick-or-treating this evening. If you have a child who's old enough to understand trick-or-treating, you probably have a very pumped kiddo who is ready to run outside long after their bedtime and who will likely be devouring candy all evening. Good times. Today, I'll share some thoughts on Halloween for the little, little ones and for the older kiddos. Plus, I'll share some tips for getting sleep back on track if Halloween results in some nighttime fears. Hi, I'm Allison Edgity, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. I don't know about you, but I thoroughly enjoy Halloween with my girls. I particularly loved it when they were preschool age because I think that's the age group that has the cutest costumes, probably because we parents get to pick them out. And they are just excited to trick or treat at, I don't know, say five houses, and they're thrilled. It is the best, in my opinion. In the event that you're still not exactly sure how you'll be handling Halloween tonight with your kids, I'm just going to go ahead and share what I've done over the years. When my girls were infants and toddlers, we just took them to a pre-trick-or-treating event and a par- that had a parade in the park in our neighborhood. Then we legit took them right home and put them right to bed. When they were in preschool, we just added a little extra step to it. We continued to go to that park parade, and then on the way home, we would let them trick-or-treat at maybe four houses in our cul-de-sac. They were thrilled. They couldn't even believe that our neighbors were giving them candy, and they still did not really go to bed late. It literally wasn't until they were in elementary school that I really let them walk around the neighborhood and trick-or-treat with their friends, because that's when they really knew what was going on. My personal perspective in those early years was that I got to dress them up, take some cute pictures of them, but still not rock the sleep boat. It also gave me a chance to be home to hand out candy to the other kids in the neighborhood, which I actually kind of enjoy and I haven't been able to do in recent years. So I enjoyed that time. Also, when my girls were in those preschool years, I was very thoughtful about reminding them during the day that Halloween is all pretend and that they would be seeing lots of kids and probably even some adults dressed up in costumes. I would also tell them how my mom, their grandmother, would dress up as this creepy, evil little witch on Halloween. I mean, she was a legit, very good witch. And she would do this whole thing to the trick-or-treaters. And so I let them know that sometimes adults participate as well, because let's be honest, the adults in costumes could be very scary for kids. So I wanted them to go into the night, even just going to that parade, knowing that none of this was real and that they were going to see some really interesting things and to know Every mask had a normal face behind it. Another thing we still try to do now is to not let them eat unlimited amounts of candy on Halloween night because that can thoroughly mess up their sleep. Plus, you're just piling it on top of the fact that they've been outside running around in the evening, which that by itself can make it hard for kids to fall asleep. And so I try to limit the candy to an extent. So we generally would let them each eat three or so pieces after they got home for trick-or-treating. I'm sure they'd had plenty during the day leading up to it. And then we would tell them that they could have more at breakfast, which I realize might be controversial. But for me, it was, okay, let's just not eat a ton right now. And then surprise, you're going to get to eat some at breakfast. That way, they weren't overloaded with sugar when I was trying to get them to go to sleep. Side note on the candy, this has nothing to do with sleep really, 
but I can't stand battling my kids over those dang pumpkins full of candy. So over the last couple of years, I've let them pick any 10 pieces they want out of their little pumpkin buckets, and they get to put it in a Ziploc bag with their name on it. And then I allow them to eat it whenever they want over the next five days. So I tell them this is all they're going to get for the next five days, and they can choose when they want to eat it. If they want to eat it all in one sitting, they can do that. And if they want to space it out, they can do that. And of course, Of course, like in all things in our house, my kids handle this very differently. I have one child who paces herself very, very on target about what she's going to do each day. She has a plan, it's paced, and she sticks to it. And then my other child devours it probably within a day, if not one sitting. And I'll let you guess which child takes which approach. (laughs) So during those five days, I put the rest of their candy away where they can't see it. And then the whole candy craze usually starts to peter out a little bit. If they're still asking about their candy after five days, I let them choose another 10 pieces for the following week. But after two or three weeks, I just toss the rest of the candy and it's generally a non-event. Okay, back to Halloween and sleep. That was a complete aside, but... Someone told me that idea, I can't remember who, several years ago, and it's actually worked quite well, so I thought I'd pass it along to you. All right, so if your child seems at all nervous about Halloween tonight leading up to it and the whole concept or what's been happening, you can just tell they're nervous, my two biggest tips are to, one, not push them, not force them to stay out and participate in Halloween. There's no benefit. I assure you they'll outgrow this. They will eventually want to participate in Halloween. And two, be very, very clear that all of this is pretend. If you haven't listened to the episode I recorded with my daughter Addison, listen to episode 53, where she talks about this. If your child is still nervous, worried, or scared about Halloween-related things after Halloween, There are four things I recommend that can help you get sleep back on track and help curb some of that concern. First, remember that being overtired fuels anxiety. So if your child was up late on Halloween or hasn't been sleeping well since, try putting them to bed 30 minutes earlier than their typical bedtime. This can help them fall asleep before all those evening anxieties kick in. I know many of us can relate to this. When you get overtired and fried, you are more likely to worry about things, particularly at bedtime or in the middle of the night. So we want to help get our kids ahead of that period. Second, don't change anything about their sleep environment. So if they're suddenly now scared of the dark or worried about monsters, don't add a nightlight. Don't suddenly leave their bedroom door open at bedtime or when they're sleeping, etc. As those little changes with great intention, they can actually affirm that there is a reason to be worried. It's kind of like, oh yeah, you're right. The dark is scary. Let's give you a nightlight or, oh gosh, yes, we'll keep the door open so nothing happens in this room. So it can unintentionally fuel those anxious feelings and it can kind of be a slippery slope. So stick to your consistent routines and sleep expectations. Third, be sure they aren't watching or reading anything that could really be further activating their imagination in a way that could continue to drive nighttime fear or anxiety. Don't, for example, have them watch or read anything that has monsters, spooky nighttime scenes, etc., If there have been Halloween books leading up to Halloween, time to put those babies away and move on to Thanksgiving books or your typical books. In fact, sometimes just taking a break from screens, even if you don't think they've been watching something that would scare them, taking a break from screens for just a handful of days can really help children who are anxious or worried at night. It's just the way the screens affect some children's brains. I promise you it can help even if you're not convinced that what they're watching is a trigger, or not even a trigger, if what they're watching is fueling some of their worries. Fourth, and this is important, I want you to use simple and confident language to address their fears. 
Here's an example of what you can say. You saw a lot of people dressed up on Halloween, and we saw lots of houses with decorations that were kind of spooky, and some of them had interesting noises coming out that they were also a little spooky. I know that that has made you worry, but the good news is that all of that was pretend, and Halloween is over now. Those were all normal boys and girls, and some adults too, who were dressed up just to have fun. They were pretending. And those were pretend sounds that were turned on at some of those houses. You have such an amazing imagination, but all of the Halloween things made your imagination get a little carried away. So tonight, if you start thinking about Halloween, you can help your brain Think about something else that makes you happy and worry less. Like you could start thinking about when we go to the beach and build sandcastles. Oh, I love it when we do that. That way you get to fall asleep thinking about things that make you happy. So let's try that tonight. So that's an example of something you could say, and you can kind of tailor that based on what your child is saying or worried about. It's just really important, and I know I'm repeating myself, but it's really important that you help your child understand that Halloween things aren't real. But it's equally important that you give them a tool because sometimes kids can't help themselves. They're going to worry even if we tell them they don't need to worry. So giving them that tool of thinking about something they really love or enjoy, like going to the beach, that can help them kind of redirect their own brain when they start to feel themselves going back to that worried state. So great, great tool. You all, my hope is that Halloween is a totally joyful day and evening for your family. But in the event that your child gets rattled, I hope these tips help you get their sleep back on track quickly and more importantly, help you avoid a sleep regression. If you ever need to connect to chat through some language specific to your child's fear, you can always schedule a 30 or 60 minute consultation and you can learn more about my services at sleepandwellnesscoach.com. Happy Halloween, my friends. I'll see you back here next week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to How Long Till Bedtime. To learn how we can work together to improve your child's sleep, please visit sleepandwellnesscoach.com.